you up there. You stay up there. All righty. <laughs> Hi, guys. It's Lara from Mad Mimi's Crochet and Farming. And my co-star is over there. I was going to film over there, but um, let's just say that uh, the, the room that I needed from over there was taken over by her. So um, my co-star is not allowed to come into the video today. So she probably won't pay attention to me because she never does. Okay, so this is Make Along Monday, and I, of course, am uh, super late in getting this out, but, you know, that's okay. Um, so I know uh, most of you guys know that I signed up uh, to learn how to knit socks. It wasn't a... Um, it's not the little teeny tiny little needles that you do this, you know, with. Uh, we're making some boot socks, which are more practical in Alaska. Um, so, I, I've been there for the last two Sundays. Um, this last Saturday, um, I, for, I actually didn't forget. I knew that I signed up for... Um, a weaving class learning to use um, the rigid heddle loom. Um, and I've been wanting to do that, and they finally had the class. But the first class, um, I was the weekend before last, and that was the hockey game, the last hockey game, and I had massive headache. So, um, I missed the first class and I said, I'll just catch up. I mean, I'll just, you know, do the next class. It's, it's, it's good. I'm good with that. Um, they said, no, 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 no. We have confidence that you can make this up. <laughs> so, um, I know a couple of my Zoomy friends have seen what I, what I did, um, but I will put some photos in here. Um, kind of showing, you know, what I had done in pieces. And um, so what I have right now is um, this. So I, I was able to take the, um, the, the loom home. I am making a scarf for um, next um, hockey season. Um, I don't know all of the the terms because I had a very very quick. Uh, this is this this is that. Um, I'll teach you more, you know, in a little bit. Um, but we're just gonna kind of get you caught up. And I was like, all right. So I did do all of this by myself. Um, she taught me how to put the. I forgot the long ones. And if I had my um, my sheet with me, I could I could tell you which which ones were which. But um, you know that's okay. Um, so I have my 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 blue yarn here that I'm using, and I am using yarn. And I have a little um, other kind of thing um, that I can make decorations in. My yellow yarn and thingamabob is in here 
and that's a safe way to carry it. I did not put it, put my other stuff through, but that's okay. I just put those in my bag, and now I don't know where my bag went that had the, oops. I got to keep that in the neutral position. So, there. Um, so, yes, I am making a scarf for um, hockey next year. And I'm just doing a random. I'm not making any kind of patterns whatsoever. So, now, luckily, um, next Saturday, we are not meeting. Um... So I have a little bit long. I have a, a two weeks, a little less than two weeks to play catch up. Although I will say the people who were in the class weren't much farther along than I was. So um, since I'm not going to do anything special, I'm just going to weave, you know, the colors back and forth and back and forth. I'm not trying to get a pattern or anything. I just wanted to do this for fun. Now, I do want a loom. Um, I want one bigger than this, though, because I can pretty much only make scarves with this. Um, I would have to do two of these or three of these to make a rug. Um, I can make scarves and I can make um, table, table, I'm looking at mine over there, whatever you call those things. Not tablecloth, but... Anyway, so um, I do want one of these. I'm thinking I want a 48-inch one. This one is, um, from here to here is, uh, I think it's like 18 inches. But um, you can only weave this much. And I think that is like 12 inches. I can't remember. Um, and then it shrinks up some to there. So, um yeah, I do want one of these. Um, I will get one of these. I'm putting it on my um, wish list for uh, Christmas next year. I want the largest one that I can find. Of course I do. And, um, and I want the stand that goes with it. Um, because that will be a hard... Hard one to hold in my lap. Right now, they have these little things right here. These corner. I'm trying to see if I can. Here we go. The corner bend right there that you can put it in your lap. And it'll attach to the table. But unfortunately, my table isn't like that. It just wants to slide off. So, um, yeah. So I have to actually put this one on a table and stand up. And it kind of hurts my back. So um, I will be looking for different ways. So this is my make along with my Fairbanks friends. Um, and I did meet a couple of new friends today or, or last Saturday. Um, so this is my make along with them. And uh, so, yeah. That is make-along number one. I'm going to put this. I'm starting to box up some yarns. And the whole couch is filled with um, totes. So, make-along number two. I'm going to make you guys wait for um, hashtag yarn vacation AU. Okay. I just need, I wanted to make sure that I had those up there. So, my next make-along with my friends here in North Pole um, are my knitted boot socks. Is that what they're called? Oh, come on. Oh, here we go. No. Um, oh, Intro to Boot Socks. So, um, they are written by um, one of the instructors. There are two instructors, um, and we have nine people in the class. And one of them already knows how to knit socks. Um, so, uh, 
she doesn't count. <laughs> um, she's there for moral support for one of her friends. And um, so while everybody else was working on um, their heel flaps and turning their heels and then connecting the the gussets and the what are those other, and the instep and making it back into a circle again she had already finished one and was almost done with her second one so yeah she didn't count um she's very nice very quiet woman though i think her name was sandy or her friend's name was sandy i can't remember but um oh I don't, never mind. Um, so, um, this is what my sock, it's kind of actually looking like a sock, isn't it? Except this is the cuff right here. Okay, so the yarn that I am using is um, La Biem M M E, and the color on this one is Tang. I mean, look at that beautiful orange and pink. It is gorgeous. I will have enough to probably make a pair of socks. Um, just a pair of socks. Mm-hmm. I might try that, too. Okay, that's after I get my hat done. Um, the next yarn, I'm using three. All th The three are held together. So the next one I'm making is a Madeline Tosh. Um, this, oh, this one, the tang was a fingering weight called BFL Tough Sock. And it's this word that gets me every time. Um, 465 yards, 75% blue faced lest, lester, less. Lester, I think. 25% nylon in the color Tang. And then this one from um, Madeline Tosh is... Uh, what kind is it? It is 100... Maybe? It is 100% superwash merino wool. It's a medium number four and um, 200 yards. And the color is found pottery. Okay, and the other yarn I am using is um, this purple. And I don't know if you can see all the different colors in it or not, but there's some green, there's some yellow, red, orange, all kinds of different colors in there with it. Um, and this is Angora. Um, this was donated to one of my uh, one of my instructors. So um, that's uh, what's going to help make it really super fuzzy. Um, all right. So I have learned to use DPNs. Um, I normally prefer the. Um, Oh, the, um, I can't even think. I'll co It'll come to my head in a minute. It's like the magic circle, uh, magic loop. Thank you. Um, magic loop. Um, but for this, it was kind of hard. Um, it's, it was kind of easier to now have four different portions on the magic, on the magic loops, on the um, DPNs. So now, um, this is the cuff of my sock. So we're working them top down. And uh, it's sticking to me somehow. There we go. This is the heel. I did the heel flap yesterday and I turned the heel yesterday, and now I'm um, decreasing on the gusset part right here. This part is the instep, and the I have, 
let me see, these four stitches right here are part of the heel, and these four stitches over here are the other part of the heel. So those will stay just like that. I'm not sure how, I didn't count how many stitches I have now, but I'm getting it back down to the 28 that we started with, which is what we had right here in this part of it. So um, this is what the sock looks like so far. I have a mouth. Let me in, let me in, let me in. Okay, no, so this is the heel. And we are making the sock to the toe right over here. So, um, we only have one more class. And it is my hope that um, I at least get this one sock done. I have a week. At least I'm, I'm, I have caught up from uh, being, you know, late and late to the class. I have caught up. So, um, aside from the woman who already knew, has already knit socks before. So... Um, there are some some that are very near to being done and that are and getting ready to start on their second. And there's um, one or two that are further behind than I am. So that, I'm good with that. It's all good. So that is my, my intro to boot socks. And I will have uh, my last update on that hopefully at least showing you one and then as i continue on with my second sock i i'll just i'll keep showing you because um i have to have more than one boot sock that because i'm just going to wear them around here because you guys know i don't normally wear socks outside i know i know that it's okay for me not to now my make along that you guys uh, would, would know more about is my yarn vacation. So, um, our destination was Italy and there wasn't anywhere in particular. And, um, you know, I was, which I was, you know, really glad about. Um, I, uh, I spent, um, a summer in Italy with my mom and dad. Um, my godparents worked for the state department and we switched houses um, for a month. And we lived in their um, their apartment in, um, in the American area of Rome. And then they lived um, at our house. Um, so, <laughs> what can I say? Are you going to come up? Come on. Come on. Come on. She wants to play with her snake, but she can't play with it yet. Come on. Anyway, she's going to come up when I'm least expecting it. Um, we, um, when we first got to Rome, I um, was sick. Um, nothing that um, would... Uh, come here. Okay. You can go out in just a minute. Nothing that would, you know, it wasn't, I, I was motion sickness. Let's just put it that way. I had one hell of a case of motion sickness, but it got worse um, because my mom had booked us on so many tours. We're going to go here. We're going to go there. We're going to go up. We're going to go down. We're going to go all around, and I just kept getting worse and worse. My dad was driving. Um, because, you know, we, cars, you know, we couldn't just drive our car over there. So we had my uncle's car and, um, my dad driving was scaring the bejeebers out of me. And of course I was in the back seat, which everybody knows if you have somebody that is car sick, you don't let, you let them drive. But I wasn't old enough to have an international driver's license at the time. So, um... I was in the back seat getting sicker and sicker by the minute. So my mom finally called my aunt and said, what can we do? And so they said, there's a after dinner drink in Italy 
and people drink it to cleanse their palates and, you know, continue, I guess, on to the next course. So my mom and dad bought that and they, my aunt and uncle said, just make sure she's in the bathroom. If we think what's going to happen is going to happen, just make sure she's in the bathroom. So they had me, they gave me this little shot of some after dinner drink. And I went to go drink it and the smell was just atrocious and it just barely touched the tip of my tongue and projectile vomit everywhere. I'm sorry to say it, but that's what it was. I'm 16 years old. I did not want to go to Italy to begin with. Um, I had a boyfriend and who at 16 wants to leave their boyfriend? Well, um, so I did some more projectile vomiting as I was yelling at mom, see what you see what happens? Of course, I didn't do that. We, we, we didn't do that as children whenever I was growing up. I was singing praises to the porcelain god for getting rid of everything. I went to sleep that night um, and I woke up the next morning and I actually felt great. So I was able to continue on and I actually enjoyed my time um, while I was... Yes, no, you weren't even thought of then. So it's okay. It's okay that I, you weren't there. Um, so I actually went about my touristy things with um, feeling feeling much better. And uh, I didn't really care about the boyfriend all that much. Um, so uh, one of the places that we went, and I do have pictures. I do not have very many pictures, but I will send you um, a couple of the pictures that I have. Now, I do have a picture of... Me and my father um, in front of Trevi Fountain. Um, now, I did use... Is it okay if I grab the snake? Okay, let me grab the snake. Okay, you hold on because I wouldn't want to drop you. Okay, so Trevi Fountain was kind of... Oh, you're going to go? Okay, I'll let you out in a minute. <laughs> Uh, Trevi Fountain uh, was kind of like um, sunbaked or sun-dried or sunburned, except it wasn't burned. It was like bleached. So I used a white for that. Um, I enjoyed Trevi Fountain. And we, you know, where'd you go? Oh, okay. Yep, she wants to go out. See if I can. There we go. Um, so I enjoyed Trevi Fountain, as I said, you know, I think this is the third time. Um, and I enjoyed walking around there. Um, and, um, we went to a couple of, you know, little places on buses and stuff where I still got car sick, but we knew what would fix that, right? That, mm-hmm, yep. That bottle was gone, um, I was actually, I was thinking my mom and dad were drinking it, but they always poured me something and all I had to do was tick, put the tip of my tongue on it and that was it. And even then I hated to do it because I knew what was going to happen. Okay. So, um, we went to, um, was it Mount Vesuvius? I think it was Mount Vesuvius. Um, and of course... You know, in my, you know, 16, 17-year-old mind, actually, I think I was 16 when we went, um, whenever that, you know, they said that there were people in um, precarious positions whenever the, the lava came, you know, it didn't dawn on me that the lava was going to, you know, melt them into oblivion. And that they made these things, but of course I wasn't allowed to go in there uh, because they were in precarious positions. And I would have been mortified um, to even see anything like that. So um, my mom and dad went in, which mortified me even more. Um, 
but you know, that's okay. Um, there were some, you know, statues and everything out there. Um, other, you know, like they had like somebody baking or something and I'm like, you know, it didn't dawn on me anyway. So, uh, oh, you're back to see me. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, we went to Venice and, um, oh, there's a couple of funny stories. I'll try to be quick about them. Um, on our way to Venice, we took the train and we were sound asleep on the train and, um, the conductor or the ticket taker came and knocked on our door and um, the people who spoke Italian were very, very angry. Um, the, the three of us did not speak Italian. Um, and I, they were trying, in a nutshell, we did not have tickets to be on a train from Rome to Venice. And they were going to put us out on the, um, on the side of the railroad tracks. <laughs> and um, evidently some some nice Italian man came and, you know, somehow or another, my dad threw away the tickets, but had the receipt for them. Luckily that the conductor did take the receipt and um, for, cause what my dad thought were the tickets were, it was actually the receipt. And something I don't know, but anyway, we ended up in um in Venice. We stayed there about five days, I think it was. Um, we took gondola rides; those were okay. Um, and then we took a boat ride to Murano. I think it's Murano. It's where they made hand blown glass. Um, my uh. So, um, that's my other part is all of these different colors, the orange, the purple, the pink, and there's some gray in there. Um, and even a, some silver. Um, those were colors that I used to represent Murano, uh, for, um, some priceless, um, heirloom type quality, um, hand-blown glass. Um, and... So we were in, I spent, I can't tell you how many times in Mar in St. Mark's Square. And St. Mark's Square is covered with pigeon. I mean, pigeons everywhere. And I had bags of food and I was just feeding them, feeding them. They had, and I don't know where all of the pictures went, but I was covered from head to toe and I would do different poses. And those pictures all, you know, kind of disappeared. Um, but I do have two pictures of me in St. Mark's Square with, uh, surrounded by pigeons. Um, and not a single time did I get pooed on by a pigeon. Now, my second time, or not the second time, I should say, uh, we were eating at a cafe um, that uh, overlooked St. Mark's Square. And we were underneath an umbrella to protect us from the birds, right? Well, um, I was just getting ready to tell my mom and dad that I was totally mortified again because I looked in my soup bowl and there was half of a bug. I don't know where the other half went and had it gone in my you know stomach and I ate it, that's fine. It's extra protein, but I did not want to see me eating it. Um, so I could not eat anymore, but it was right about the time then, uh, that I was getting ready to tell my mom and my dad that all of a sudden my dad stood up and just yelled, blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to say what he actually said. And we're like, what in the world? And then we looked and we couldn't stop laughing. Is it like there was a trail of poo? The pigeon flew underneath 
the umbrella and got like the napkin beside my dad. He got my dad's arm pooed in the food on the shirt and then it it just it just kind of went zoom got my dad and we were just giggling and giggling and giggling. He's like da 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 and then he started giggling. He thought it was funny but um the uh the people did bring him some food some more food by that time, I didn't want to see any more food again because I had a half a bug sitting in my minestrone soup, which was very good, I have to say. <laughs> Even with that half bug in there. Um, and so um, that, was, that was the fun of um, St. Mark's Square. Now, we're back to um, Rome, and we did... Um, you know, some more touristy things out and about. But most of the time, we stayed in Rome. And um, one of my favorite places was the Colosseum. And if anybody knows anything about the Colosseum, is that um, it is filled with cats. Or it was filled with cats. I think they're, they're trying to spay and neuter all of them now. I know that there are sanctuaries um, near the Colosseum that are trying to capture and spay and neuter all of the cats, but, um, I wanted to bring a cat home. I, I love cats. I always have, always will. Um, and my mom and dad said, you can't. And I was, well, but I want to. So they finally had to get somebody to explain to me that, we were not allowed to leave to to take cats with us. Um, that if we lived in Italy and we could trap one, you know, or Rome, you know, that we could probably take one home. But you know, of course, nobody would ever know it. Um, but it would be hard pressed trying to get one through um, customs, you know, type of thing. Uh, so I sat there, you know, many, many, many days and I did get one to come up near me and, um, it was, uh, it was a gray tabby. I don't know if it was a male and a female, um, cause it would just, you know, fingertip to nose type of thing. And that was it. So for my last, um, thing, I put some fuzzy fur on here. Um, kind of make it look like a gray tabby-ish, but you can see it is kind of fuzzy. And um, so that is my Yarn Vacation AU. Um, great memories that I had with my mom and dad. Um, I'd give anything in the world to have them back. Um, but they are up in heaven um, enjoying their grandchildren um, that, that went before I did and, um, their great grandchildren that, uh, went before I did. So, um, and they have my sister and my brother up there also. So they have their, fa they have other family members up there and I know they want me down here for as long as I am supposed to be down here. So, um, with that said, it is time for me to go. I need to upload this video um, because uh, I, need, I am so far behind. I need to catch up on everything. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you to my new subscribers. Thank you to my old subscribers and my in-between subscribers. Um, I want to wish you the best of day or best of evening. And um, you're going to come back up. Come on. Do you want to say goodbye too? Come on. Oh, you want me to bend down and pick you up? All righty. So, and Persephone says goodbye also until next video. So, thank you guys for watching. You guys have a great day, and we will catch you next time. Bye-bye. Remember, I told you you couldn't be in my video because you were trying to knock stuff over. What's up with that? Blah, blah, blah.